Cheers everybody. Graham from Smarty Pines coming at you. We're going to take another look at my brew area. <clears throat> this time we're going to take a look at the two types of controllers that you can use for mashing. One of which can be used for mashing and boiling. Uh, keep in mind these are not the only options out there. I'm just throwing two options out there that uh, one is usually available to you at every brew store and definitely on places like Amazon, eBay, any online store. The other one is only sold by one place that I know of and that's High Gravity Brewing. And they have a website, highgravitybrewing.com. It's a very, uh, very cool site. They got lots of stuff. It's, it's just basically uh, a homebrew store and um, they happen to have a controller that was within the budget I wanted. Now other controllers are out there. There's people that blow thousands of dollars on a controller panel that, that, that sits on your wall and is hardwired in and has all the lights and doodads and whatnot. As cool as I thought that was, my wife was never going to go for that. So I went for the next best thing, something simple. So I'm going to break it down. Two options. One option that I used for quite a while, and then another option that is very recent for my setup, and I enjoy very much. Okay, so first option that is available from brewandgrow.com uh, or any Brew and Grow store. You can also get it on any online store, pretty much any homebrew store or any online shopping, you'll be able to find it. It is a Johnson controller. It is the digital version of the Johnson controller. Uh, be careful, uh, don't buy the analog version with the dial. That will not do you very well. <laughs> um, so this guy's the A419. And we've talked about this controller in one of our, our very first RIMS tube uh, video, I believe. Alex goes over the details on it. I'm not going to go over how to use it. The manual's very simple to read. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's got two cords, one to, one to plug in for the power, which... Uh, course means the other one is for your whatever it's controlling the heat or uh, cold temperature because this can be used for a freezer to monitor your fermentation temperatures if you're using a freezer for fermentation or even a refrigerator um, any kind of cooling unit it's really easy to switch it back and forth from heating to cooling just read the instructions it's very simple you just open it up and flip a switch and then um, Obviously, this can be plugged into any 120 receptacle. So, you're probably wondering, what is up with all that hardware? Well, this is what I used in order to uh, put it on my stand with the rims tube. I just uh, used my imagination. Um, Alex does something similar. Uh, um, if you're looking for brackets to put on the back end, it was really hard for me to find them um, without spending a decent amount of money because when you go online and you're looking for stainless steel stuff, people want to charge you an arm and a leg. I just went to Home Depot and found this in the uh, in the door aisle with all the uh, accessories for hanging stuff on doors, doorknobs, whatchamacallit. I don't remember what they were called exactly, but uh, this is what it looks like. They, they, there was like, uh, it came in a packet and they they have alternating holes. These are um, pre-cut. I didn't cut them. And anyways, uh, so these screws go through my uh, little stand, which is right here. And then, of course, they're tightened on with uh, nuts. So that's that's one option because you, I left this on here. You can use this thermal well, which we have listed the part 
in our other video. So if you want to go that route, you can go that route. That's the, that is the easiest route possible. But that is just for mashing. Do not use that for boil. I do not recommend it. Alex claims that you could possibly use it to boil. But he and I both agree that it would take forever to reach your boil. Because the uh, rims, tube is, rims tube is such a small vessel compared to the pot you'll be brewing in. Next up, here it is. Let's rotate it there. There you go. Better look at it. Now, I went over this in more detail in my Blickman setup video, which I'll put a link here to show you. Um, I'll turn it on real quick. It's not going to do anything because I don't, I don't have any probes hooked up to it. And, um, <laughs> well, obviously the pump switch for the pump and I don't have any pumps hooked up to it, which is good because I don't have any liquid to run through them and you never want to run a pump dry. Always run it with liquid through it. Otherwise you'll damage it. So we're all powered up and this is going to give me some bizarre numbers because it's saying, Hey, there's nothing hooked up and I'm sending, I want to send heat and Wait, no, this it's an error. I'm I'm stupid. No, um, so <laughs> that's that's how that works. Just on and normally you'd have your probe hooked up. You uh would have the uh heat source plugged in. So this would be calling for heat, it would be sending the signal, it would be turning on your element, you'd have your pump on at all times, so that way the recirculation is happening, so the heat is evenly distributed running past your probe. This guy is your simplest form for a 240 hookup for a Blickman boil coil or any other sort of 240 heating element. Why do I say that? Well, because look at it. It's a little box and you have easy control for the heat with a dial. Uh, this controls your power. It it comes already with a fuse in case you have some sort of problem with the power, getting a jolt. Um, it's uh, got heat sink here for uh, cooling. It's got, they already come with the outlets. Check that out. It, it was beautiful. And, you know, for a fraction of the cost of one of those huge panels that you mount on your wall, which look really cool but you gotta spend so much money on them this is simple it comes in many different versions the sv comes with a second option for a pump and they've got some other options on there as well but if you are doing brew in a bag or a simple um, system like mine this will be perfect for you so those those are two options for you this option will do both mashing and boil. Um, now what I did was I bought two probe leads so I can swap them out. I've got one hooked up to the mash at all times and I got another one hooked up to the boil at all times. So when I switch vessels, I just unplug this guy from the port. It's a quick disconnect. I unplug and then I take my other one and I plug that one in. So, uh, if you guys have any other questions about the two different uh, controllers that I showed here, please let us know. We're happy to answer your questions. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, alright? Thank you.